Oh, I, I was hollering. Testing. Testing. 
Testing.
Good. Let's, let's, good let's, afternoon. I'm sorry. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you please have a seat or try to? We've got a bigger crowd in here tonight. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Russell County Board of Supervisors, April the 8th, 2024, at 6 p.m. in the Russell County Board of Supervisors room. I'd like to first start off with a call of order and roll call. Andrew Hensley. Here. Nate Kaiser. Here. Tara Dye. Here. David Eaton. Here. Lou Ann Wallace. Here. Rebecca Dye. Here. And Steve Brady. Here. Sir, you have a quorum. Okay. Okay, the first item is their invocation. Caleb, would you... Uh, do the invocation, and if you remain standing for the pledge. Let us pray. Father God, Lord, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you today, Father. Father, we ask that you forgive us for where we fail you each and every day. Help us remember what this Easter season has been all about, Father. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to come out and be a part of our local government. Help lead, guide, and direct us in everything that we do. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If everybody's had an, opp if everybody's had an opportunity to look at the agenda, I'll entertain a motion to approve the agenda, or if you need things added to the agenda, please let me know. Mr. Chair, I'll offer uh, a motion to accept the agenda as presented. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. Uh, I'll oppose the like sign. There are none. Okay. Next on the agenda is our, we're having a public hearing on our uh, Russell County Park Ordinance. Had to have some minor changes to it, so I'm going to go ahead and declare the public hearing open on the Park Ordinance. If anybody would like to speak, just step up to the podium and make comment. Hi. Sandy Hess, Source Creek. I just had a, a quick... Um, request for clarification on something and I do know this is not question and answer but under provisions 29 and 30 it speaks about the use of the parks by groups of more than five or five or more is the way that's stated um, and it does mention the Russell County Courthouse the old courthouse and all the parks and campgrounds so does that mean that any group of five that visits this it says they have to uh, apply for a facility use application must be submitted and pay a $50, uh, like a deposit. So a family of six uh, <laughs> couldn't go. So, I mean, what's the clarification on that? Any of the campground, or just okay. a group of like-minded individuals that wanted to stop at the campground one day and have a picnic. Do they have to? Can I go ahead, board? I'll clarify that. <laughs> okay. That, those two paragraphs stipulate to if you're having an event there with more than five people like a group like mm -hmm. a birthday party or having a, a historical event or at the, if you're having a party that where we have to schedule it and block off that time mm -hmm. we work with all the community centers and all the others it, that pertains to events mm -hmm. okay I know 29 does state that if they are organizing an event mm -hmm. but then 30 does not Okay, we'll, so, we'll make that correct. Yeah, and uh, you know, it, there was no exemption or, or clarification for it to say family unit or mm -hmm. anything. It just specifically says groups. Okay. So I just wanted to make sure that, you know, that wasn't going to be an issue for groups of five or more, especially families, to use the parks or anything. I, I don't think it was intended to be that. Way. See, we went from 29, which you see it's a four events, and I'll proceed that on to 30. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Anybody else want to comment on the park ordinance? When once, twice, gone. I'll declare the public hearing on the park ordinance closed. 
Okay, uh, next on the uh, our agenda are presentations. And first, have Dr. Hooker from the school board. Mr. Alonzo, yes, do you have my presentation? Yes, ma'am. Do you have a clicker or do, you, do I need to tell you when to click? Uh, tell me when to click. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Chair and the members of the board, thank you for allowing me to speak before you today on the Russell County Public Schools fiscal year 2025 budget. Our budget was built on the enrollment of 31 students, 100 students, which is slightly lower than the current year. You can go ahead and click. This year, our focus for the budget has been teacher salaries. Our teacher discrepancy has become a critical matter. This matter directly impacts the quality of education in our community. Just in the last two years, we have lost 51 teachers to neighboring higher paying counties. Our dedicated educators play such a pivotal role in shaping the future of our children and society. Teachers are more than just instructors. They are mentors, role models, and advocates for our children's success. They invest countless hours in planning lessons, grading assignments, and supporting students both academically and emotionally. They invest their time, expertise, and passion into nurturing young minds and preparing them for success. However, the current compensation levels for our teachers do not adequately reflect the invaluable contributions they make to our community. As the cost of living continues to rise, it is imperative that we recognize the financial challenges our ed ed educators face. As a matter of fact, we have many teachers who hold down multiple jobs to make ends meet. They are coaches, bus drivers, custodians, or they work a job outside the school system. By providing competitive and equitable salary packages, we can attract and retain highly qualified teachers who are essential for maintaining educational excellence. Competitive salaries will boost morale, job satisfaction, and overall retention rates among educators which ultimately benefits students and the entire school division. As I said to you back in October when I met with you, this problem did not happen overnight, and we certainly realize that it's not going to get fixed overnight. However, we must realize that insufficient salaries can lead to burnout, high turnover rates that we've already seen, and ultimately a decline in the quality of education our students receive. By addressing this concern now, we can demonstrate our commitment to the well-being of both our educators and our students. On this slide that you see here, we have completely reworked the teacher salary. As you can see, last year's starting salary was around 36,000. This year we put it up to 42,000, and then we have it stepped down to 30 years. Also, given all the support scales, an increase of 3% and increased part-time from $13 to $13.50. I have also included a slide for the Virginia and Region 7 rank of salaries. We are last or next to last in all the categories. You can see this information in detail in the folder I have given you. This information came from the 2023-24 Virginia Education Association. And I... I I really wish that you all would look at that so you can see how low we are, both in Region 7 and the state. Other budget considerations, we have transportation needs, of course. Three buses are needed to replace current inventory that is over 20 years old. And then our fleet progression will continue this year with replacing a few high mileage vehicles. Also, at this time, we have 10 school resource officers. Four are not grant funded, six are currently partially grant funded, and we are awaiting grant approval for two. Okay, for the six and the two, our part of that's gonna be around $127,000. We also pay for the vehicles and the fuel, which costs approximately $6,000 per school resource officer per year. We provide them computers and printers, and then also when they go to training, we pay for the officers that come in and take their place in the school while they're at training. Okay, due to legislation, we will be hiring a reading specialist that will serve grades six through eight, 
and the estimated cost for salary and benefits to that is around $88,000. VRS is adjusting wording in the employer's manual to create a dual job of teacher and bus driver. This would allow the bus driver's salary to be included in the teacher's VRS salary. Total increase in employer paid benefits is approximately $90,000. And then Castlewood High School's roof is going to have to be completely replaced, which is approximate cost of $195,000. Okay, with that being said, the estimated revenue and the revenue for our proposed budget comes from local, state, federal, food program, textbooks, project bridge, which is a total of <coughs> approximately $57,092,449. And our estimated expenses with the new budget additions our expenses come from general fund, food program, textbooks, project bridge, which comes up with a total of $58,232,002. Which as you can see, we have a balanced deficit of $1.1 million. And I'd also like to add, due to current legislation, Concerning at-risk funds, there has been an increase of approximately $800,000 to required local effort and match. In closing, I want to make clear that all employees know that they are vital for our schools to be successful. You cannot have one without the other. Collaboration among all of us is essential for the success of our division. The new proposal salary scale will only put us up a few spots compared regionally and to the state, but it is a huge, huge start to something that has needed to be done for a while now. We understand that the lottery money can be used for the public education, and we hope that you will consider this and other options that will allow us to balance our budget. I want to thank Mr. Breeding, Mr. Eaton, and Mr. Lester, which were a part of the budget committee that we have worked with for the last several months. Both boards have been very supportive, and I appreciate everything that everybody's done through this process. Thank you again for your time and consideration, but together, let's prioritize our teachers and ensure they receive the compensation that they deserve. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Ms. Nunley, Isaiah House. Good evening, thank you so much for having me today. I'm excited to talk to you all about Isaiah 117 House. I'm the expansion coordinator for Russell County. My name is Acacia Nunley. Our goal is to change the way that foster care begins. I wanna share with you our current statistics for Russell County. There are 76 children in the foster care system, less than 10 foster families, which obviously were not meeting the need. When a child is removed from their home, they have to wait for placement at the Department of Social Services. Sometimes they spend hours, sometimes they spend days in the department with no bed, no bath. They're often very hungry, dirty, exhausted, and they have little to no possessions when they come to the department. Take a slide. So we asked the question, what if there was a home? Instead of a Department of Social Services to house children, what if there was a home where children can go to in the meantime while they wait for their secure foster placement? Our mission at Isaiah 117 House is to, pro to provide that home for children awaiting their placement, and our mission is to reduce trauma, lighten the load, and ease the transition. We reduce trauma by creating a safe and loving environment with certified volunteers to provide meals, baths, clothing, et cetera, for a child awaiting placement. We lighten the load by creating a fully equipped working environment for DSS caseworkers, printers, office space, a secure place to make phone calls, and they're always in sight line of the child in their care. We provide also loving emotional support for our DSS caseworkers, as well as meals, snacks, and anything they need to help them do their job well. Ease the transition into foster care. 
Supporting foster families is one of our top missions. As children are placed into secure foster families, they often come with nothing to their name. So our goal is to send them with five to seven new outfits and anything that they might need, like twin beds, car seats, formula, diapers, meals, etc. This makes it easier for our foster families to say yes, and with more local foster families, our children are less likely to have to leave our county and go to other counties. This will reduce their trauma as well because they won't be changing schools and leaving the only homes that they've ever known. So what will it take for us to say, not our kids, not our community? Here are some fast facts about Isaiah 117 House. There are 54 locations and 22 open homes. Yesterday, we kicked off the 54th location here in Russell County. We had our kickoff. It was extremely successful. We're very pleased with our turnout. And now we're going into our six months of raising awareness. During this time, we want to visit every organization that will hear us speak about this cause and partner with us as we bring it to our county. We have a land donation currently, and we're so thankful for that. We're in the process of working toward closing. We've got our appraisal and our survey done. Before we can break ground on the land to start building our home, we have to have $75,000 in the bank. Before we can open our home, we have to have $175,000 additionally to the $75,000 for our first year's budget. The home will have three positions, one full-time location leader, one part-time support coordinator, and one part-time care coordinator. Now I'd like to share with you a story from one of our open homes. I got a call, this is not me, this is a story from an open home. I got a call as I was getting my own children tucked into bed. It was to help care for three guests who were just removed from the home they knew, the same age as my kiddos. I immediately went into preparation mode to be up and be what these guests needed. I was to be there from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. Once I arrived at the home, I was greeted by three very tired yet very awake little guests. Immediately, they were attached at the hip. They loved to get undivided attention and affirmations for every single thing. I happily obliged and made sure they knew they're loved and appreciated in the moments I had with them. The middle guests loved to hear, good job. So every chance I could, I made sure they heard those two simple words that I know I personally take for granted. They wanted to camp out and sleep in a well-lit room. Without this home, their night could have been a lot harder. They may have not felt the love they received because of the Isaiah 117 house. I'm so appreciative of this home and being able to serve our guests while showing them unconditional love for the time that they are here. Love, you're not alone. So we would like to ask you all to join us and our whole community, and here's how you can do that. Join us for our next expansion meeting on April the 20th. We talk about tangible ways and actionable steps we can take in our community to bring this house right where it needs to be. You can set an alarm on your phone for 117 and pray with us every day. We believe in the power of corporate prayer. Follow us on social media, like, share, and comment. It really, really helps us. And then also help us spread the word by getting us in contact with local churches and organizations for speaking engagements in the community. Become a SOC buddy. We have information at our information table outside of how you can do that, and that's to be a monthly donor. 65% of our funds come from monthly donors. Visit our information table, come ask us questions afterwards, check out our merch, and grab some promotional materials. Thank you all so much for having me today. Thank you. Matt. Good evening. Uh, for those of you on the board who don't know me, my name is Matthew Boyd. I am the newest planner over at the Cumberland Plateau, and I'll try to keep what I have tonight brief. Uh, we are trying to get under contract from DHCD for the Tiller Trailer Park Waterline Extension Project. And in your packets, you should have a couple documents in here that just needs the board's signature. Uh, that should be an anti-displacement policy, business and employment plan, fair housing certification, non-discrimination policy, 504 grievance procedure, interagency agreement, admin agreement, and prior authorization costs. If anyone on the board needs an explanation of what those documents are, what they contain, please let me know. You need a motion on that? Yeah, well, we need yes. is an ordinance. This is pretty much standard yeah. on all our water parks. Yes, yes. I'll make a motion. 
Okay. I have, I have a motion to authorize these documents. Second. Second by Tara. Any discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, 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 any opposed? Like sign? There are none. Thank you. Okay, Sharon Dixon. Sharon? Is she here? Sharon Dixon. Sharon, Sharon Dixon. Dixon. She was going to try to make it. No, that's a presentation. Sure. Okay. I'll table it. I'll get her next time. Okay. When she should come in, we'll keep her. Okay. okay. Next item on the on the agenda is the approval of our minutes for board uh, meeting March 2nd, 2024 and March 8th, 2024. Mr. Chair, um, I only found one thing on it that I could see. Down, um, let's see, on March 8th, it's page two of two, um, where it was talking about the Citizen Advisory Committee. Mm -hmm. um, Mrs. Wallace wasn't listed. She abstained. Okay. <clears throat> Can you make that change, Lonzo? Yes, sir. Any other changes? Can I'll make a motion it? to accept both and approved minutes can we now with those changes. Or we have to do them separately. Terry? You can do it. Can together. Yeah. Okay. With the Your motion was to approve with those together, correct? Okay. With the change. Okay. With the, change. With the changes. Huh? All right. You need a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Okay. We're good. Now we have the approval of our expenditures. If you've had an opportunity to look at those, I'll entertain a motion that we approve those expenditures. I'll make a motion to pay the bills. I have a motion. To, uh, need a second. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. There are none. Okay, next we have committee appointments, and I think I don't think we have any committee appointments just uh, inf for information only. It is right, correct, Chairman. Uh, currently, the committee and board appointment applications are still coming in. Uh, at the next meeting, the board will be able to start selecting for each one of these boards and committees as, as it comes through. So um, I have, Tara Dye, you asked about two, and we have received those. We went back in. And we're going back through the old system because some people put them in early through before we did the changes that y'all requested. And so we're going back through our data files to make sure we're pulling them both. You're welcome, ma'am. Lonzo, what, uh, what would be the timeline that they need to get those in before the next meeting? They need to get them in at least by the, let's see, hang on a second. I apologize, I've got this one. I think the next meeting it would be May 4th. So. It may the May the 4th which will be at least by the 30th of April. I'll make that easy. Last so for month. the public, anyone interested in any board appointments, if you want to serve on one of the county boards, make sure you get your application <coughs> in by April, April 30th. 30th. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is public comment. So I'm going to go, I have a list here, so I'm going to call you up uh, by the order in which you signed these things. So first is Jim Little. Jim Little, 1660 Copper Ridge Road, District 1 there, Mr. Hensley. Call him Andrew any other time. Uh, as all the turmoil has gone on, some of it justified, some of it not, with the actions on the Moss 3, with other things that have gone on, I'm not going to speak on that. People more well-educated than I am on that subject. But what I want to speak on is the lack of decorum and respect from both sides of the aisle that I've witnessed. You know, here in the country in Russell County, we put in a lot of time. We teach our children to respect, and even if we disagree on subjects. And I'm afraid that right now we're seeing on both sides some verbal assaults that become personal, 
I think that that has no place here. We can agree to disagree and move on without making personal attacks. I think that maybe I'm from the old school too much, but I think the Christian way, I think that the proper etiquette is to show respect. We may not agree with these individuals setting up here. I don't agree with a lot of what goes on up there, but they're elected officials, and I believe we're called to show respect to them. Okay, but by the same token, that respect goes both ways. And I think when someone appears before that, to speak in a condescending fashion is not acceptable either. So what I beg this county is to come together a little bit more. We're going to disagree. This Moss 3 issue is very emotional. There's no doubt about that. It's emotional to me. I had family <laughs> in the mines there, immediate family. Very emotional for some that are sitting on the board up here for that. Definitely emotional for a lot out here. But that doesn't mean we lose our respect for each other. That being said, one other thing is what our children and grandchildren see. I happen to know of history classes and civics classes that view this proceeding right here and do evaluations on it. And is this what we want our students to see? Is this what we want our kids to see? It's the behavior that goes on here. There are times I'm downright ashamed on both sides of the aisle to even be from Russell County. You know, I lived up north, I went to college in Baltimore, lived outside of D.C. <coughs> in Prince William County for years, was in the service for years. I feel like I'm back in Northern Virginia again sometimes. Mr. Kilgore's laughing on that one. Yeah, well, okay, that's good. But seriously, you know, the behavior that's going on, I just call everyone to maybe extend an olive branch a little bit. I'm not asking you to give up on your principles and thoughts. I'm just asking you to be civil and disciplined towards each other. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Jim. Sandy Hess. I'm good. She's good for the okay. yep. Josh Burgess. Josh Burgess, 1857, Orchard Road, Southwest Virginia. I feel like I ain't seen y'all forever. It's good to see you. It is. <laughs> Anyways, I very much oppose this landfill and still hadn't met anyone in his fort. I feel like Russell County has approached a tipping point with its citizens, <coughs> and it, it's a sad sight. It is. You're faced with a decision to look at two or three very wealthy people and say, I'm sorry, but Russell County is not the right place for this landfill. Or turn your back on the 26,000 people that are proud to call this place home. <laughs> you will change our lives forever. I urge and strongly support the board, the board members to do whatever it takes to stop this landfill in its tracks. And that's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Amy Branson. Amy Branson, Castlewood, Virginia. First, I want to sincerely thank the board members who are opposing the landfill. And I can't imagine the <coughs> pressure that you're facing, but I have to admire your courage and um, your independence to stand up and make your own decisions for the health and welfare of our citizens. Uh, the more I've worked on the Moss 3 landfill, the more similarities between it and the opioid crisis that we are all living through that I see. Short-term windfall financial gain for a few, while the rest of us are left to clean up the mess. Our area has a rich history, but some of that history is tragic in how the citizens of Appalachia are taken advantage of. As a pharmacist, I have firsthand experience of the opioid epidemic and how it stunted our growth and prosperity in Appalachia. Addiction knows no economic class, no race, and no gender. It grabs hold and it doesn't let go until you're in jail or worse. In our county, it's part of the reason that we have difficulty in having so many foster children and not enough homes for them. <clears throat> 
The opioid crisis is another example of a for-profit company coming to Appalachia with snake oil promises of a cure, an opioid that doesn't cause addiction, and treats the pain of our hardworking friends and neighbors while making the pharmacy manufacturer rich beyond their wildest dreams and crushing the dreams of our friends and neighbors. We wanted that cure so badly that we did not think for ourselves and we swallowed the lies like so many swallowed the pills. The companies had scientists and drug reps all proclaiming how safe that the opioids were, a modern painkiller with no side effects. Where are those scientists and drug reps now? We are smart, kind, driven, hardworking, and so many more positive things. We can and should think for ourselves. We are not against all landfills, just landfills that stand a high probability of being an environmental and economic disaster for our community. We should do our own thorough investigation of these landfill promises, and we should insist on having data before deals, like hydrology and geology studies. We should not proceed haphazardly with nothing more than promises of cash and engineering workarounds held together at best with duct tape and paper clips. I know none of you want to bet you or your children's future on engineering workarounds, especially by engineers who are bought and paid for by a private company who stands to profit from these quick fixes. It just sounds way too familiar. Each of those identified problems in the Potista report does not need to be finagled into a MacGyver-like fix. These are not issues that require workarounds. These are issues requiring investigation and are possible deal breakers for the whole project. We don't know if that site is acceptable for the landfill, but we know we don't have the data. Anyone with a lick of sense knows more than duct tape and paper clips. <clears throat> you use the greater chance that at least one of them, it won't work. Time. All it takes is for one fail for our community change forever. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Jess Jones. Hello, uh, um, my name is Dr. Jess Jones. I'm a biologist with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service uh, stationed in the Virginia Field Office and in the Department of Fish and Wildlife Conservation at Virginia Tech, where I also serve as an associate professor and director of the Laboratory of Freshwater Mollusk Conservation. I want to first thank uh, the board for the opportunity to speak about freshwater mussels and my concerns about the development and long-term operation of a mega landfill in the Clinch River watershed in Russell County. I've been working with freshwater mussels in the Clinch, the Powell, the Holston Rivers in a scientific and conservation capacity since 1994, primarily to restore mussel populations to these rivers with the aim of making their populations larger and less endangered. As you may be aware, freshwater mussels are one of the most endangered groups of animals in the country, with 24 endangered mussel species known just from the Clinch River which is widely considered the highest concentration of freshwater endangered species anywhere in the United States. In fact, the Clinch River in Virginia and Tennessee is the last stronghold and home for many of these endangered mussels on the entire planet. The section of river in Russell County is especially important as many mussel species are being restored here by the Virginia Department of Wildlife Resources, Virginia Tech, uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and the Nature Conservancy. Why do mussels matter? The millions of mussels of some 45 species living in the Clinch River are filter feeders, filtering the water every day to make it cleaner for people using the river. And they're part of the web of life, helping sustain other plants and animals in Russell County. The site of the proposed landfill is in the Dumps Creek watershed, which is a direct tributary to the Clinch, entering the river at Carbo, Virginia. Because the landfill site is only a few miles away from the river, Concerns about impacts to mussels are real, as endangered mussels and one endangered fish are known to occur in the river immediately downstream of the Dumps Creek confluence. I am concerned that if the landfill is developed in an operation for many years, there is the potential for a large spill or a chronic leakage of pollution from the site to surface water and groundwater pathways that ultimately could enter the nearby Clinch River where the mussels live. If pollution is of sufficient toxicity and magnitude, it could harm the mussels, their fish host, and habitat, and perhaps even kill them. 
The Clinch, Powell, and Holston River watersheds have a history of various types of industrial spills. Uh, even at Carbo in the late 1960s and early 1970s, uh, two major spills occurred uh, at that time period. Hence, concerns over the potential impacts from spills in the Clinch River are real. In closing, the biodiversity of the Clinch River is akin to a coral reef. It is a place that teems with life, but is also one of the last homes for many of the species that live there. The river, mountains, and land of Russell County provide a sense of pride for the people who live there and has helped sustain them for generations. Thus, protecting the Clinch River and its surrounding landscape is a primary concern for them and the conservation community. And finally, if the board is uh, interested in additional questions on the endangered species or the endangered species, actually, I'd love to contact there with our uh, Southwestern Virginia Field Office. Thank you for the time. Yep. Thank you, Dr. Jones. Where's Christian? Good afternoon, board and public. My name is Orsh Christian. I reside in the big Cedar Creek section of Russell County. Uh, first off, I want to let the general public know and the board that I'm still in strong opposition to any landfill here in Russell County that would allow trash from other counties and other states to come here and be dumped. I cannot see a positive thing on that. Next, your board members have eliminated this road safety committee because you're feeding the people that came and this and that and the other. To me, they have been a big plus for Russell County reporting uh, drainage, being the drain pipes being stopped up, potholes. A lot of people complain to me about hitting these potholes and knocking those vehicles out of line, and that's not a cheap thing to have realigned. So I think we need to reconsider that uh, road safety committee being put back in the session and uh, to be a service to the citizen of Russell County. And next, y'all cut these things out, different committee to save money. Uh, let me make this suggestion. A seven is on the board. You make at least $600 a month. That's $4,200. Once you cut your pay down to 50 or $75 like these other committee people uh, that you cut out, you complained about, and that would save the county a pretty good chunk of money per month. Forty-two hundred minus seven be thirty-five hundred dollars that you might have saved the taxpayers of Russell County. Think about that. Thank you. Thank you, Ors. <laughs> Betty Dickinson. Betty Dickinson. Betty Dickinson, Hurls Valley Road, Castlewood. Dumps Creek below the land site runs right alongside of the road and the railroad that'll be used to bring in up to 6,000 tons of garbage to this landfill every day. <coughs> Dumps Creek feeds right into the Clinch River less than a mile away. Any rainwater runoff or leachate from garbage trucks or trains is going to quickly end up in Dumps Creek and be carried right down to the river at Carbo. <coughs> there it's going to spread its pollution all the way down river. In 2018, then State Senator William Wampler successfully pled to the Tobacco Commission for m grant money to clean up the 232 acres that they were in partnership with our IDA. Uh, Senator Wampler acknowledged that he was speaking as a member at that time and owner of Russell County Reclamation LLC when he said, quote, it's actually on the fault, F-A-U-L-T, fault line, unquote. The geology of the land is karst. It's riddled with caves, sinkholes, underground aquifers that supply the water to our springs, private wells, and public water systems. Karst aquifers have well-known hydraulic and hydrogeological characteristics that make them highly vulnerable to pollution from human activities, 
In fact, setting a landfill on karst is one of the most dangerous places you could ever put a landfill because it's a short hop from any leakage right into the water system. No liner is going to withstand the forces of shifting earth moving in this geologically unstable location. Add to the karst terrain and a fault line, the presence of Cheney Creek mine further down in the earth underneath the landfill, and it's a trample whammy for a disaster. Massive amounts of tax dollars and time and energy have gone to the cleaning and restoring the uniquely biodiverse Clinch River. This has enabled us to have the Clinch River State Park at Cleveland and St. Paul, the first Blue Highway State Park in Virginia. This river is vital to our growing tourism industry and provides a safe nursery and home for rare and endangered aquatic species. It's illogical to me and frankly defies common sense to allow a private mega landfill to be developed practically, practically within sight of the Clinch River. Sooner or later that landfill will leak, they always do, and leachate will pollute the river, our private wells, and public water systems. Vote no and stop this disaster. Thank you, Ms. Dickens. Hunter Norris. Hunter Norris. Okay. Well, if he shows up, if he shows up, we'll let him come. Hunter. Yeah. H U N T E R. Okay. Tammy Garrett. There she is. I'm here. Just a little Good evening and thank you all. I'm Tammy Garrett from Lebanon, Virginia. Um, first of all, some takeaways from our public hearing. Uh, Gentry Lock attorney could not answer the questions. Uh, the Potesta representative could not answer questions. Neither of them can answer questions beyond their prepared statements. Mr. Lester's budget was not an accurate calculation of financial gains and losses, and he admitted that he used no financial model to arrive at his projections. Uh, Mr. Breeding's comment regarding the 200-year uh, geomembrane liner was misleading and probably inaccurate. I have researched those liners, and from an EPA study, uh, this is a quote, examination of both laboratory and field data indicate the projected service lives of HDPE geomembranes may range from many centuries to less than a decade, depending on the material and the exposure conditions. Another study uh, by Ian Peggs uh, uh, regarding HDPE liners he concluded at the end of this uh, research, we delude ourselves if we think we have the ultimate solution to waste containment and disposal using HDPE uh, geom geomembranes. So uh, they are not foolproof. They are not guaranteed to last hundreds of years. Um, some of the studies that I saw indicated that they could last uh, 15 to 20 years. So um, it all depends on conditions. Of course, no uh, liner has been tested hundreds of years. They've not been in existence that long. So we really don't have enough studies to know. We know that train cars full of trash will be sitting near homes in the proposed IDA businesses if they actually materialize for who knows how long to be unloaded. So there appears to be many concerns that were not clarified during the uh, public uh, informational hearing. It also appears that those of us who are opposed to the landfill must present scientific proof of harm of a landfill. 
However, the Board of Supervisor members and the county administrators are able to just say that DEQ and the lawyers can answer the questions, thus avoiding accountability for their statements or for their decisions now and in the future. Um, we can prove 24-7 that landfills have been harmful for every community that they've been located in and that they have caused a multitude of problems. Russell County voters will hold you accountable for this decision. We are expecting, we are demanding that you who work for the people, that we, we voted for you, we demand that you listen to us and vote no on any matter pertaining to a landfill moving forward in our county. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. Jared Ring. Is Jared out there? There he is. Good evening, Jared Ring, Castlewood, uh, Calvary Baptist Road. Uh, since we last met, I've been doing case studies on dozens of other landfills and their host agreements, the circumstances around them, how it worked out afterwards. Um, often enough, the story's the same. The developers go into the poorest counties they can find, usually when county governments are in debt, and they promise wealth. They usually include veiled threats of litigation, too, so it's a pretty standard playbook. Uh, and, and that's an argument I, I have to tell you I'm sick of, too. Um, in what sane world does a, gov uh, does a developer get to threaten a local government into changing their own ordinances so they can do a project? Um, there's been a lot of talk about good faith negotiation, but any negotiation in good faith, or how can any negotiation be in good faith when veiled threats of lawsuits hang over it? Um, I'd also like to address the argument of, well, it's got to go somewhere. I mean, uh, the, the fate of global consumerism isn't going to be decided in Russell County, uh, and we owe people outside this county, and especially in cities, nothing. Um, I, I'm here to tell you all, uh, I, I don't think this is half the deal after looking at these other landfills and how it turned out for their local governments that it's been framed to you all as. Uh, Seldom did the local governments I looked at get the deal they thought they were going to get or the wealth they were promised. Uh, and these were places, too, that had established industries and healthy economies somewhat. Um, uh, unlike us, whose primary industry will become waste disposal if this happens. And it also puts us in a position, um, <clears throat> well, I'll get to that in a moment. But uh, I, I really have to question the fiscal policies that got us into a situation like this to begin with. I mean, uh, how much debt has the county accrued since last time we met? Um, something that really sticks out to me from a conversation I had with a county administrator at another Virginia landfill is, I don't know what we would do without that extra million dollars in our budget. And the reason that that sticks out in my mind is if the county does manage to get the money from this, what happens when the landfill closes and we no longer have that money in our budget after a decade of having it budgeted in? I mean, it, it really just shifts it on to the next generation of board members. Um, but uh, it, it pushes the problem of shrinking tax base and few generations forward to the next uh, Sorry, I can't talk this evening, y'all. But uh, uh, I'd also like to remind you that all landfill liners do have a lifespan. It's not a question of if it will fail and release the liquids that are sequestered in the trash that can't be pumped out. It's a question of when, because they do have a lifespan, as Ms. Garrett pointed out earlier. And that's usually right before the bond expires for most of these developers. Jerry, do you have time? Okay. One final thing, uh, nearly half of the federal Superfund sites are landfills, and the number of those that are modern lined landfills is not zero. Thank you, Jerry. Tim Wallace. Tim. Wallace. Tim Wallace. Tina, is it Tina? T 
16 and 1. Kim 5. I'm Kim 5 from Cleveland, Virginia. Um, I just want to take a minute to thank all the volunteers, sponsors, and participants in Solidarity Fest. Despite some cold weather, we managed to raise over $3,000 to help with the opposition to the landfill. More billboards are coming. I would also like to thank all those who oppose the landfill project, who are tirelessly working behind the scenes. Our Facebook group has grown to over 3,100 people. In addition to the UMWA, our landfill opposing allies now include the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, Warehouse Employee Union Number 322, and the Western Virginia Area Federa Labor Federation. I am here as an elected representative from CWA Local 2204. I do have a letter. I believe you guys received it from our president. Um, and it states, in unity and solidarity, the members, retirees, and officers of Communication Workers of America Local 2204 stand in alliance with those fighting with the proposed Moss 3 landfill in Russell County. There is no equality without solidarity. There is no justice without this social movement. The landfill is, uh, this land is rich in union history and is memorialized as a sacred turning point in the 1989 Pittston coal strike. It is also the historical location that bore Camp Solidarity and the Daughters of Mother Jones. We stand proud with all those unified members of humanity as they fight back to say no to the Moss 3 proposed landfill. In unity, there will always be strength. Uh, signed, Chuck Simpson, President Local 2204. He, we have also got a letter from the Western Virginia Labor Federation and Western Virginia Coalition of Labor Union Women. Um, it says, to the office and member, the officers and members of the Labor Federation and CLU, stand in unity with all those fighting the proposed Moss 3 landfill. An inquiry to one um, is an injury to all. The Moss 3 area and surrounding acreage is sacred land, as it is the location of enshrined a turning point in the 1989 Pittston coal strike. It is as well helped to solidify Camp Solidarity and the Daughters of Mother Jones. We are proud to stand with those people as they march, rally, and stand in unity to fight the proposed landfill at the Moss 3 landfill. In unity, there will always be solidarity. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Okay, next is Jessica A E A L B E R T A V I C T Albertovic. Jessica. All right. Hello, my name is Jessica Albertovic, and I am from Cleveland, Virginia. A, a friend of us, International Brotherhood of Teamsters. To whom it may concern, recently Teamsters Local 322 was informed of a very disturbing development one which threatens to undermine and dissolve a proud noble history earned through courage, hard labor, grit, and sacrifice. The event that I am speaking of is a misguided attempt to convert the historic Moss 3 work site lo located in Clinchville, Virginia to an untremendous landfill. On this hollowed site, members of the United Mine Workers of America violently, violently stood and asserted themselves against uh, economic injustice and worker exploitation. Little did they know that in 35 years, the location of Pittston Coal would be under siege by certain entities. This, uh, this atrocity sets the stage for a, a decisive eradication of a crucial component of local history. For this reason, it is imperative that prudent steps are taken to preserve worker history for which it has earned bond to American history. Anything to the contrary is morally irresponsible. Teamsters Local 322 stands proudly with our fellow union siblings in the fight to protect this historically significant location. Sincerely, Brian Payton. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. R.D. Sneed. 
Part D. Chairman and the members of the board, Mr. Uh, Lester and Mr. Kilgore, we, uh, I want to echo and second this gentleman's comments. You gave me my lead in tonight. Um, but I want to make a real point, real quick point. Um, the Board of Supervisors, you are the captain of this ship with regard to landfill and many other matters. Mr. Lester, he works at the direction of you guys. Mr. Kilgore's legal obligation, he can correct me if I'm wrong, is to the Board of Supervisors. He technically represents your body, the entity, and his, his legal obligation is not to us, the citizens. That's your guy's obligation. And I think sometimes there's a lot of mix-up about that, so I want to make that clear. One thing, I, I enjoyed being in Cleveland this weekend. I was there for the Solidarity Fest and uh, Friday evening and um, all day Saturday. Um, if you like music, you missed a lot of good music. But I found it ironic. I couldn't get out hardly maybe one out of ten times on a cell phone, text or whatever. And then I got to thinking about that, and I asked, I said, where's this cell service in down here? And it's about the store at the foot of the mountain. And I thought, well, now, you know, the Board of Supervisors, we've got a Bible town, and we don't even have them decent cell service to be connected to the rest of the county. And I, I just can't believe that we'd be talking about dumping a landfill on them. We won't even get them cell service. You guys got some power. I would ask that you use that to get their cell service in. Secondly, um, I, I'm also, and I'm, I'm trying to look into this, and I apologize for having to be so blunt tonight, but I don't have any choice as I see it. I understand um, that the, the Cleveland made an application for solid waste funds, and somehow it was blocked. I don't have all the details yet, but I'm comfortable enough to say it didn't, application didn't get through. Now, what makes me wonder about that is, you know, there's going to have to be a solid waste facility at this landfill, God forbid, it goes in. And so it makes me wonder what's going on here with regard to the solid waste. I'm going to dig into it some more. But if that's the case, you know, I ain't happy about it. It's, it's not good. Um, also, I'm really aggravated that my friend Charles Edmonds has been removed from the Planning Commission. I didn't find this out till yesterday or so. Um, I wish I'd known. He's been on there 20 years. He, um, he's had some health problems, but there's nothing wrong with his mind. He's a deep, he's a deep th thinker. And, you know, Charlie, I think he may have written to you already. If not, he's going to, but I talked to him, and he wants one thing corrected in the minutes. Uh, supposedly, he was removed for one reason. He hadn't gotten training. Well, I said he was a 20-year man. He got training when he first came on some 20 years ago, all right? So he would like to get that corrected in minutes. Also, I understand another reason was to save 100 bucks a month. And I'm sorry, he's worth more than 100 bucks a month. And I think we made a mistake there. And I wish you all would take that into account. I'd rather pay the $100 a month it's time than to lose a 20 year man. Sorry? Time. Time? Three minutes. Well, I didn't get much done. <laughs> you talked a lot, R.D. <laughs> Thank you, R.D. Jackie Hackney. He's in here. Uh, Dr. Jackie Hackney, Belfast, Virginia. This is a, is a continuum of what Dr. Branson had started earlier, so hopefully I can get through it in the time frame. By the way, ex-Russell County teacher, making 31000 with two master's degrees. Left for greener pastures. Bristol started accepting waste in 1998, and in April of 2022, an independent expert panel was convened to find solutions for the stinking problem that Bristol had become. In the panel's final report, they found at least two major engineering workabouts that did not work over time, sidewalls and leachate pumps. We keep hearing from the TRC experts that Bristol was unique and didn't even consider it the same situation. Well, Bristol was a modern landfill with a liner, per the expert panel report. The same exact liner system presented back to us in January. That was leak proof by TRC. Maybe TRC was nervous and had a senior moment during the presentation to us, which seems a little hard to believe, since he worked on the landfill design. The panel was also found, the, the panel also found groundwater in Bristol that contained benzene above actionable levels. 
The panel <coughs> believes that the benzene is likely being derived from the waste mass, indicating an internal source. However, the panel did not have sufficient data to determine the mechanism of the benzene. This further suggests a low rate of leachate collection from the landfill through the collection system and mixing of the leachate with groundwater. Lots of fancy words to say it's leaking without saying it's leaking. Seems we have had similar words on the opioids' addictive properties. We have to ask ourselves how many engineering workarounds will be required at MOS 3. Given the soil's potential fault lines, high water tables, and potential underground voids. Don't know for sure. What I am sure of is that it'll take a buttload of duct tape and paper clips to get this thing permitted. In closing, we would like to once again thank the Board of Supervisors who are standing up for their citizens' health and welfare to oppose the landfill. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. That finishes the list of people that asked to speak. So I'm going to uh, declare public comment closed, and we'll get on with the rest of the agenda here. Pardon me? Three more, okay. Good evening, board. My name is Jerry Hughes. I live in Sword Creek, Virginia, and I drink Clinch River water. Uh, so I have a, some kind of a stake in this. Uh, Russell County Reclamation's top consultant said the Bristol landfill should not have been approved because of water. And this Moss 3 site has way more water than that rock quarry. We've got all those voids and stuff in the mine. I talked to a man that worked for them. They, sent, they mined one seam and it was on a slope. And they pumped thousands of gallons of water a day out of that mine just so they could get the coal. <coughs> so we know there's all kinds of water there. Uh, there's also the possibility of stacking up trash on the initial sales so they could build higher if they want to. Uh, some landfills I have seen about have five different liners on the bottom, it's each a different material. Uh, uh, do you know for sure that the 30 acre pad? is <coughs> solid and not been mined under. Has anybody done any testing, core drilling? No S answer? Sir, that'll be a, we don't answer questions during public comment, but that'll be a part of the permitting process. That yeah. There'll be extensive studies right. to do that. Also, I've got one more thing. Uh, when you mine and you pull back, you call it by retreat mining. Most of the pillars are removed, so there is little holding up the mouth. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Next. <clears throat> My name is David Dingus. I live on Gravelick Road. Um, I would like to encourage you to please help out the teachers that were here earlier, if you possibly could. I have worked with, not inside the school, but as a behavioral health assistant inside the schools. I worked at Copper Creek Elementary for quite some time. I worked at Castlewood Elementary for quite some time, trying to help behavior problem kids. Um, I had a good relationship with a lot of the teachers that worked there. Those teachers work hard. They deserve better than what they got, better than what they get, they really do. Um, Ms. Wallace, I'm from your district. I live on Gravelick, and this proposed landfill is going in a couple miles from my house, my, my family home. My dad's a union coal miner. He's sitting in the next room. 
and the house I live in is all I got. I got a well. The county's never. It took you guys nearly 40 years to pave our road. No water lines come up my to my residence, no sewer. What I got is a well. And if that well goes, I'm sunk. I don't make the kind of money that I can just up and leave. This is my home. I got a little girl that's being treated by St. Jude for a medical condition right now. And I don't want you to put in something that could possibly cause that to get worse. I really don't. I've lived my whole life in this county. I've tried to do everything that I can to help people in this county. I'm still do everything that I can to try to help people in this county. To this day, I do. I don't have much. I don't want to lose my home. And I want you guys to please think about that. Not, I grew up on Gravel Lick. My grandmother lived in Cleveland, right up River Road. It's the first swing bridge that you come to when you go up River Road. And not long ago, when a flood came, it brought up some sewage. Some sewage got in the river. It shut everything down. Nobody could get into the river. And like, we're gonna we're gonna put in a landfill. We we can't even secure sewers that are there. Like this is something I want you guys to please consider. And I realize that you know there a lot's been said about respect and emotions run high. And my emotions run high too. And it's hard to not feel disrespected to have been a lifelong resident of this county, to have your father and your parents bring you up and, and dedicate their their lives to working in this county, to have like all of a sudden be faced with losing your home or having to move because you don't want your kid to be sick. You know, for and somebody said it best earlier, for the board members that are opposing it, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate you. Please stand on that, and please remember Time. to look out for us. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I guess I'll finish it up. Jennifer Chumbly, 765 Egg Farm Road. Our folks are giving you information that's cited. I mean, this is real information and it, it's important. Um, I want to remind everyone that a host agreement is required by law. We did figure that out last time. And that this board does have the ability to say no to that host agreement. And I hope that all of you say no. I hope everyone, <coughs> single one of you say no. Make me wrong. Um, we also learned that an ordinance or possibly a solid waste management plan will need to be changed before this goes any further. You're shaking your head no. That's what they said before. See, there's misinformation. You can't go back. Um, I'm still concerned with the landfill and the site. It's not a good location. We know that. I'll continue to stand up for the people in Cleveland, Carbo, Clinchfield, my surrounding area. I don't care whose feelings I hurt. This particular location is too vulnerable and people's lives and home values and health and our future is just not worth it. And you guys won't be here forever, but our future generations will be here and they'll have to deal with this. We can hold off this landfill for at least eight years. This is not the solution to Russell County's issues. This is not the solution to your budget. This is not the saving grace. We have some brilliant folks here telling you that there is ways to work around this. We can find a way, but this is not gonna Y'all may not even be here by the time this landfill goes in. So you're going to make a decision on something that you may not even be here to see to fruition. We all know the location is where our wildlife live. We know that we have moved trash dumps for that location because of the bears and the wildlife getting into them before. So what makes us think this will be any different? What makes us think this is going to change that location in any way to put a big fence around it? I mean, I got fences around my farm and don't keep them out of there. You can put the biggest fence around it. They'll still get in it at some point, and they're still going to take trash out of that location. The bears, the raccoons, the birds, the buzzards that roost on that ridge, that entire ridge, mountains. 
So I'm going to keep it short and sweet. I'm going to ask that you please say no to the host agreement. And if that is the case, Lonzo, then we're going to need more information on why this doesn't need to be changed now. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. That'll, be, that'll close public comment. Okay. I don't think we have any constitutional officers here, do we? Nope. Okay. County attorney report, request? Nothing? No. All right, Mr. Lester, it's up to you. Thank you, Chairman. First thing on the county ministry request is, of course, the um, Russell County bylaws. We're, um, we're still looking at the updates on that to make sure that uh, we've, we have changed the dates of the meetings and also the, uh, uh, our format that we're looking at. I've got some of the changes in. I would just want to remind somebody to do a last minute look at it, and we'll have that approved at the next board for you know things that y'all want to look at for comments, or et cetera. So, um, school board. Next on the county ministry request uh, reports is the, uh, of course, as mentioned before, the Rogue County Road Reporting System, as y'all have seen with the ones that have come through us and has been not conveyed on to VDOT for, to look at these issues on a continuous basis. Also, the, um, along with ours and is in the reports that you'll see is the VDOT monthly road report. As you see in there, that has a complete activity request uh, that has been completed, activities that are planned, rural rustics, and of course the roads and the routes are looking at and projects for that. So that's for y'all's review. Next on the county administrator request, the first one up is a the Russell County calendar year 2024 tax rate and public hearing notice. So uh, as y'all know that as part of the parliamentary, we polled the board to keep the tax rates the same. The Commissioner of Revenue and the Treasurer wants to proceed as, as the, uh, at the current tax rates. So to move forward, to keep the tax rates the same, there will have to be a motion before that. I'll make that motion. So I have a motion to keep the tax rate at what it was, which is 0 0.63 cents per hundred. Yes, sir. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. Okay, discussion. When are we going to have a public hearing in May in regards to setting a tax rate? Yes, we have to ha I have a public hearing on the tax rate and the budget. But the, but, the, but the tax rate can be changed in in May. If you have yes, that the board. I have to turn it. Yes. Yes. Yeah, during the public hearing. During the Yes. After the public hearing. Yeah. Like the public to review any kind of documents as far as our budget goes, a lot of stuff's online for previous years. Um, things change year to year, but there's a lot of smart people out there. Take a look at that, see what you come up with, come to the May meeting. I'd be glad to listen to your ideas. Any further discussion? If not, I'm gonna call for a vote. All in favor of this motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. aye. All opposed, like sign. Opposed. Have Andrew opposed. Next on the county ministry request is, uh, of course, the uh, Pierce Salmon request. This is a VDOT resolution and a request for a commercial um, grant for uh, commercial interest development. This is part of the agreement that we have between Buchanan County, Tazewell County, and Russell County on the development of the Pure, Pure Salmon Project. Uh, this is the VDOT resolution, and of course, this is a economic development access program that can provide up to a maximum of $500,000 for the project, and it requires, if it goes above the 500000 it requires matching funds for dollar to dollar up to $800,000. This is the, um, the route itself. 
commercial curb and guttering and the road and the road in there it's into the facility itself as a commercial entrance I need a motion for approval on the resolution I'll make that motion I have a motion to approve this resolution to have a second second I have a second any discussion discussion please yes ma'am I was reading this letter and it says um, the EDA, which is Economic Development Access, will fight up to 500000 but it's going to be 800000 and we are taking 125000 of our coal severance funds. Is that correct, Lonzo? Currently, right now, the route is being evaluated by Thompson, Linton, and VDOT for, uh, for the cost on it. If as part of the agreement that we've got between the three counties, you know, Tazewell County is in installing water and sewer and possibly natural gas, but Cannon County is cost sharing in the cost of it. If it goes above 500,000, it is a full 100% grant up to 500,000. If it goes above that 500,000, it's a dollar for dollar match up to $800,000. So, so the maximum amount, if it comes to the $800,000 is, to put in it would only be 125,000 of co-severance the reason we ask for the co-severance is that's not part of the general fund that's not coming out of the taxpayers dollars those things are dedicated to road and restricted only to road building so that's that's why we ask for it to be so do we fund. will we need to give an additional money because uh, it'll still be short I mean it won't be where will the other the well, other the come from v dot gives a match dollar for dollar up to it uh and so v dot will match, so v will match that hundred twenty five thousand. yes for yes us. yes okay up to up to 150 actually they they put the wrong amount in there it's actually up to 150 each that still doesn't get you to eight hundred thousand plus mm -hmm. well he said v dot will match that 150. So if we put in 150 150 of ours and the 150 v dot match I've got 175 short. Okay. The 125 was changed to 150, so I apologize if you got oh, any reason. Okay. Yeah, so there, there's where the, the, miss, the numbers are coming in. Yes, thank you. Okay. All right. well, what's Buckhannon County's responsibility during this project? In the project that was agreed by the Board of Board Supervisors, it's a three-way share, the same way than three equal shares. Uh, well, not three equal shares. The, the host counties get an actual we get 35% of the revenue that's from it. And yeah. Tazewell the County does too. But we're to talking seven. about the cost of this road. Does right. Buchanan and Tazewell, sure. will they put in on the cost of this road? Yes, ma'am. Us, as Russell County, we are the financial fiduciary. So what revenue that will come out of it, uh, whatever benefits or performance agreements that we give to Pierce Salmon at the front, based off their machine and tool, the real estate and personal property, we've got an estimate of what we're going to clear on revenue after we pay the bills. Those bills, that cost will come equally out of our revenue, and then the remaining net will be shared equally across us for the remaining of the year. Yes. Everybody clear on that? It's <laughs> I'm going to call for a vote. Okay, All in favor one, one, more, one more thing. I'm sorry, Mr. Yes, Chair. I've found my note. Um, there are timelines on this thing. So are, are we going to meet those timelines? And if we don't, what happens with that? Because yeah. there's 90 days here, six months there. Mm -hmm. It takes us, if you do the math, and like what, I do, which is kind of fuzzy, but um, it gets us back to March of next year. Yes, it does. And that was one of our concerns when we said met with them. We actually have a meeting with the developers, the VDOT, uh, the state agencies, the uh, financing, and the legislators on April the 11th. We actually got a meeting tomorrow yes. to lock some of these timelines down. Yes. We were always concerned because the so project when, was on, it was off, it was when on. When did you meet on. with them? We met with them. Uh, uh, approximately about two weeks ago. But you're going to meet again? Yes, tomorrow. Okay. Yep. That's not tomorrow. No, it's the 11th. The 11th? Yes. Yes. Sorry. Yes. 
Yeah. Um, I was looking in their letter. It says uh, economic access road project because Russell County must apply for the funding. So we have to apply for the 500000 What we do on, on an EDVA, EDA uh, grant is because the facility in the commercial entrance is in the jurisdiction of Russell County. Yes. If it was sitting in Tazewell, they'd be applying. And in turn, Tazewell applied for all the money to bring the water and the sewer in there. Yes. Right? yes. And do you expect it to be taken into the highway system? You've seen in the VDOT letter, it is going to be brought into the system. If we do it, it according VDOT. to VDOT standards. Well, one of the agreements is, and that's why we've got VDOT at the table, it's going to be designed to VDOT specifications. That way, when it's completed, it will we'll be able to move it into the system. Thank you. Anything further? If not, I'm going to call for a vote. All in favor of this motion signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. aye. All opposed, like sign. I'm not opposing, but I just want to abstain till I get okay. some more information. I'm not opposing it Six at four, all. One abstention. Six four. Rebecca, abstain. Okay. Next on the county administrator request is the Cumberland Plateau Regional Waste Management Authority Solid Waste User and Manpower Agreement. Whew, that's a mouthful. Um, it's, the same one we do every year. it's the same one that we do every year. So this is, uh, I hope that y'all have had an opportunity to take a look through the uh, Manpower Agreement and the User Agreement, and I need a motion for approval. Mr. Chair, I'll offer you a motion uh, to approve this as it's presented, but just to verify that it's the same thing that we continually do. Yes, sir. And yes, for discussion, okay. okay. I have second. a motion, I need a second. I'll second it. Okay, discussion now. Yes, it also says in here that this has a plan of operation. This is not included in this. Do we normally get that when we're approving this? Because, um, just curious, that where is, is that? We, Russell County, Disposal has an operation plan. It's under the Regional Waste Management Authority. Yes. Waste yeah. Management yeah. Authority yeah. Yes. 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 Which all three counties are under the same plan. So it's not included in our packet at this time. To it's go in. Along it's in the this. folder. It's in the folder on y'all's packet as an attachment. On my digital. Yes, ma'am. Not my. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Because it's uh, approximately, uh, I think it's 232 pages. Yes, it's digital. Are there any changes to that waste management plan? Uh, only the dates. And we don't we don't change the plan of operation either. No, that will, that is the regional continuity. waste management authority. Okay. It's under their authority. Thank you. Yes. Anything else? If not, I'm going to call for a vote. All in favor of this motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. There are none. Thank you, Chairman. Next on the county administrator request is, hang on just a second, let me get through all this documentation. Park ordinance. Yeah, that's, that, we just had a quick hearing. Yes. Yes, on, on paragraph 30, yes. So you need a motion to approve the... The Russell County Park Ordinance that was drafted and amended as is with the correction to paragraph 30 to include the events. Mr. Chair, I'd like to offer a motion that we approve the Russell County Parks Ordinance with the amendments as Mr. Lester stated. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. have a motion and a second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor of seeing Oh, I do. Oh, I do, and I'm well, sorry. The commission. Who is the commission? Should we? Are we supposed to change that to the county no, or no, the, the commission? No, the commission was dissolved under the previous board. There is no park ordinance. So commission. we don't remove that wording. Yes, i removed it from <laughs> okay. mine. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it, mine it, still it, has the, it. The old ones that had the commission in it. It's been removed from the new. Mine, my, my correction has removed all the commission terminology yes. in that in that ordinance okay thank you very much okay now all in favor of this motion signify by saying aye aye, aye. all opposed like sign there are none next on the county administrator request is of course the march 2024 primary election results 
I need uh, approval to accept those results. So moved, Mr. Chair. Both the Democrats and Republicans. So I have a motion and a second to approve those election results. Any discussion on this matter? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like saying. There are none. Uh, next, uh, right behind it is the Russell County Electoral Board ICE scanner tabulator, and this is the uh, security requirements that's mandated by the General Assembly. Uh, <laughs> it cost me money all the time. <laughs> I needed approval for an, an ICE tabulator in the amount of $8,020. I need a motion for approval. I'll make that motion. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve that purchase. Question. Yes, it sir. will be reimbursed, correct? That is not reimbursed. <laughs> we need to work on that. <laughs> <laughs> Done it now. <laughs> Done messed up. Okay. Any further discussion now that we know it's not reimbursed? All in favor of this motion signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed like so. No, it's, it's the law. You have no choice. So next on the county ministry request is, of course, the Hone Acre Little League. They've asked for, they've got a little safety issue down there with the, um, at the Little League field that actually is part of the softball field too. So it's a, it's a fence safety repair on both the quotes that we have got in your board packet. I need a motion for approval to pre approve the Hone Acre Little League and the softball field. I'll make it motion. I'll yeah. second it. Are there two quotes, Lonzo? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. One is for the one. softball field, one is for the little league. Okay. All right, how much is going to be covered by insurance? Because I know that trees fell on it during a storm up a couple yes. of years. So will insurance pay on any of this? Uh, we had him to look at it, the section on the trees, but the linear footage that we're having to go back with, with new changes out on the post and the type of fence it is, it's, this one is not covered under the. We got the roof taken care of, we got the other parts taken care of, but they wouldn't take care of the fence. It wasn't let me, enough let me speak on that a little bit as far okay. as the safety issue. They had a kid that uh, the fence was curled out and the kid slid going after a fly ball and went underneath the fence and tore the leg, tore its leg pretty bad. And uh, I went down there, I've been down there with them a couple of times looking at it and evaluating. And it is a safety issue, I mean, because as time goes on, as fence settles, we need to be kind of mindful of that and do some preventive maintenance on some of that stuff before this happens. And then the fence curls out and you can't get that stuff to bend back. We tried, but it's, it's uh, Thank God the kid's okay, and it didn't hurt it too extensively, but it could have been a lot worse. Any other discussion on this matter? Well, this is just a comment, okay. um, and I'm all for safety and, and the children and everything, but I got, a, I got a little league down my way. So just so everybody knows, Clinch River Little League, you need to help them out. We've, we've done two. Yeah. All right. Thank you, David. I'm, yeah. I'm helping I'm all you. About the kids. All right. Okay. All right. Have we got any other bids on this? Oh, this is just a quote for materials. This is, yeah. The little leg is going to work with work? it, yes. They're going to do the work. Anything further? If not, all in favor of this motion, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like saying. There are none. Thank you, sir. Next on the county ministry request is another. Uh, this is a donation to the the 30th annual Russell County Kids Fishing Day. Oh, wow, neat. Um, this is uh, the previous years y'all have donated $500 in the previous years, so uh, I need to move whatever, it's whatever desire you yeah, Now, are all the, well, I mean, I know there's multiple different. That's what we was getting ready to say. That's what we was getting ready to say. Let's just do a mile three. Make sure I'm covering all three. <laughs> yes. That's why I was well, I'll make say. a motion to give to all three. You got the money. So that's for money. all three kids fishing day events, including the Cleveland, the Lebanon, and the Russell County. Right? Three. Five hundred each. 
I equal made a motion. What, okay. what are you sending down to the uh, kids' day at St. Paul? They're they're hosting it on the Oxbow, which is the Russell County side. Have they ever asked you for money? No. Okay. Then I'll, I'll leave it there. Okay. I have a it motion. Would, I mean, if they're going to, <laughs> let's I need a second. <laughs> need a second on this motion. I'll second it. have a motion. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like so. Now, back to county business, the Russell County Planning Commission plat. Of course, y'all have got a plat in your package that uh, is a division of property. As, let me pull this up. As y'all have seen, this is the, the plat of surveys that's showing the boundary lines and the line adjustments on the Willow Spring Estates. I need approval on that plat and motion. The, the Planning Commission has already approved it. They approved it on March the 18th, 2024. Motion to approve. Second. Have a motion to approve and a second. Any discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, like saying. There are none. Chairman, that concludes the county administrator reports and requests. Very good. Okay. Mr. Hensley, we'll start with you. you got anything you want to bring up, talk about? I'm good tonight, Mr. Chair. Thank you. All right, sir. Mr. Kaiser. Good. Ms. Dye. Um, I just kind of want to echo what Andrew said about the taxes. Just look at everything and come to us with concerns. Um, you know, you might see something somewhere that we don't or whatever. So, um, Also, thank you all to the ones who came out and supported Isaiah House yesterday. It was the biggest um, turnout for the kickoff that they had ever had. We also raised more money for uh, more than any other kickoff um, thus far. So we appreciate the community support. It was awesome. Yes, sir. Thank you, Amy. Um, so thank you. I appreciate that. So um, Henson is a little boy in our community that is suffering. He has brain tumors. And um, his family, they're really precious people. Um, he is, uh, they're doing a fundraiser for him Thursday, this Thursday at um, Wendy's. I think it starts at 4 o'clock? 5? Five? Five. 5 to 8, okay. So it'll be from 5 to 8. So if you all could come out and eat something, um, I know a portion of the proceeds go to him um, and his family, as well as there's, I think there's going to be bingo and some different things. Um, so if you could just come out and support that family and just love on them. Mr. Eaton. I just got a couple of things. Uh, kind of what Tara said. I went to the kickoff and I've never been involved. I've heard a lot of great speakers. I've been in settings, but I've never seen a move of God like I've seen in a setting like that. Over 200 people there. And I've seen the Lord work in ways that it made cold chills. I said with Pastor Woody Scott and I was crying. He was crying. Uh, Tara done a wonderful job. The director done a wonderful job. All the people that spoke, it was so fitting. And that has always been a real passion of mine, uh, not only seeing it from the numbers as far as financial, but the need as helping foster children and the kids. And I'm telling you, you want the Lord to bless our county, you take care of the widows and the elderly and the children, and everything else will take care of itself. And all this other stuff we're dealing with, I would ask this crowd to pray and not, I mean, I, you know, we've had threats against us as family members. We've had threats uh, against uh, my kids, stuff like that. And I'm like Miss Mr. Little, it's uncalled for. It does cause a parent to get very upset when you hear stuff like this. If I've offended anybody, I apologize. If it's anything that I've said, I do apologize. We've got to work together to make this county the best place that it can actually be. And I tell you, if you pray, God can move when we can't do it. He can do it. And, I, and I'm just telling you that. I have a strong faith in the God I serve, and I, I, I don't care to publicly speak that. They can lock my hind end up for all I care when, I come, when it comes to that. But we can work together, and it doesn't have to be with threats and uh, things like that uh, against our families and against our uh, my kids, 
and stuff. So I, I'm grateful for the interaction that we've been able to, to do and have. I appreciate everybody's concerns about this. We have a tough job to do. We can't print money in the basement like the federal government does. We're going to have to figure out ways and be very mindful of all the obstacles that this county faces. And this is one, because I served like Nate and Andrew, I served on the Waste Management Authority, and I told them years ago, this is not going to be good, guys. It's something that's never going to go away, and we're going to have to figure out how to, how to address it one way or the other. And, but I do appreciate everybody's concerns and everything, and I have the same concerns as you do. So I just wanted to let you know that. Also, one more thing. I wanted to bring it to the board's attention that in our budget meetings and our budget discussions, it's so critical that we dive into this thing to see what can be done and what can be cut and what cannot be cut. Right now, we're at a, we're at a very serious situation in our county because of the escalating inflation. We're seeing things go up in every aspect, from regional jail to the Department of Social Service to all these other things. We're going to have to have the money to be able to do this. Not only that, you're going to be faced with this next upcoming assessment. And if you look around to the other counties, you're seeing they're trying to throw them under the bus and run over them about six or seven times over the assessment. I think you've got a good board here that will work through these issues and try to do the best thing and the right thing for this county. One thing I'd like to see, and I'm going to – be doing some horse trading with our school system is on our parks and on our baseball fields. I think that they use them as much as, as the private citizen does. They're the eighth grade, the JV, and these use them, and they got a lot more maintenance people than we do. So I'm going to bring it to their attention that it might be a better fit since they're into athletics and we're not as a county that they, they might want to take over the fields and take care of the maintenance on those fields and do the things. And we'll still help them. We'll still work with them. But that might be something that we need to discuss. I just don't want to take anything away from our citizens and the opportunity they would have to utilize those fields, just like what was brought up. But I appreciate everybody. Thank you. Ms. Wallace. No, I don't have anything. Thank you. You're surprised. It's an unusual I see you're, you're surprised. surprised. <laughs> I thought she was going to ask for the look. <laughs> Done. I'll save it. You yes. save it? Okay. Yes, thank you. Um, and I'm part of the um, problem, if you want to say that, from last month. We were given the information that these gentlemen that we took off the Planning Commission were not certified. Well, I have learned from two of them personally that they are certified and have been certified for years because they have worked here. They bring a wealth of knowledge. Who's kin to who? who? How did that farm get divided? Who moved in? Who moved out? Um, I did not speak with Mr. Keith Ray, but I do know he's an engineer. He is teaching upper level math, so I figure he's probably a pretty smart fellow and he probably could pass this. And then I noticed in the Planning Commission minutes that they're asking to certify another person. Here's two people. We kicked off three and we're going to recertify two more. I understand Ms. Dyes because she's going to serve on the board. She serves here on this board, and I understand that. Crystal, she's one of my children from years ago. She's working now, but she will not be a voting member of the Planning Commission. But we're paying for her to be certified, and that's why we kicked three gentlemen off. So... It may not go anywhere, but it's my apology to these three men. I'm going to make the motion that we put them back on the board because that was wrong information that was given to us. And I voted thinking that that information was correct, and it's not. I know two of the men are certified. So I'm making the motion that we put at least the two back on that I spoke with. I have a motion on the floor. To reinstall the. We have to have their names. Oh, I have, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. That's uh, Mr. Charlie Edmonds and Mr. Jack Compton. I have a motion to put Charlie Edmonds and Jack Compton back on the board. So I will need a second. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. Now, Mr. Chair, doesn't the discussion. have to come on, come from someone that was voted in the, in the affirmative? I was in the affirmative. 
His second wasn't. No. No, she's. Uh, well, you. I thought you seconded the motion. Yeah, I did, but you don't have to take it. Yeah. Second. Yeah. Okay. That's your choice. Any further discussion on the matter? Well, I know as far as the certifications, what was explained to me was that the other two having been on there for so long that they hadn't went through the new rounds of certifications like the others had. Um, and I know Mr. Ray, unfortunately, hadn't got his certification yet. And as far as Crystal, Ernie made that suggestion, who's the chair, um, because she does look at a lot of things and process things, um, you know, certain times. So that, yep. was, that was the reasoning behind that. Now, as far as who got picked or whatever, I know he, him and a few others talked and that's how that worked because they looked at the certifications, um, the new ones, that sort of thing, so. But you have to be certified Yes. Or certified. Yes, certified. Okay. and because of those where they were, they had served for so long and they hadn't went through the new certification um, and there had been things that have changed, um, that, was, that was the whole reasoning I think that Ernie went with who he went with. And, and um, the attorney may need to correct me, um, but on voting inside the planning commission, I'm understanding that you may not be able to vote at all until you're certified. Could I get clarification on that? Okay, so in our minutes, Ms. Dye has been making motions and seconding motions and the planning commission and she's not fully certified at this time to make those motions in those seconds. Is that correct? As a board member. Oh, I'll say that again. Say that again. Say that one more time. Can't As a board, has somebody, has somebody a board who's not, who's not She's not certified yet. Are those motions valid? So they've removed their certifi certified members, so they if don't. You're member, if you're a member of the Board of Supervisors, you can make a motion. You don't have the planning. Oh, the planning oh, commission. commission. Oh, on the planning, planning commission. commission. Yeah, that's why we can't hear it. We sorry, oh. this thing is blowing. Uh, <laughs> you have to be certified. You have to, yeah. You don't have to be certified to. to so. You want to have to get those certifications done. In other words, if, any uh, further discussion on this matter? Anybody else got anything to say? I, th I think we're going to reevaluate these boards next month my understanding so i want to encourage if you want to be on a board please put an application in uh, if, if you're on a board put it in again let us see what everybody's got going on and i don't by no means know everybody um let, let us see who's doing what and we'll go from there any further discussion Call for the vote, Mr. I'm Chair. I'm going to call for a vote now. We'll just do it with a show of hands. Everybody in favor of this motion, please raise your right hand. All opposed? Vote is four to three. Motion fails. Is that all we have, Rebecca? Okay. Thank you. Okay. We need to have a budget workshop and we need a, to adjourn to reconvene. And what what date are we talking about, Lonzo? The 18th? Yes, sir. If, if we could all, if we could adjourn to reconvene on the 18th at 6 o'clock, which is a Thursday. Pardon? Are we invited to that? Yeah, you can come. Yes. It's, uh, it's a reconvened meeting, yeah. It's at yeah. what time? Six o'clock. Yeah. So Thursday. Thursday, yeah. 18th. 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 Yeah. It's a workshop. On a Thursday. Is everybody good on that? That's my only day. Well, I've got, always got a meeting there. So. Well, that was with intent. Uh, no, Steve, is, there any, other days, lots of is there any other days, days that would work? I've got a conflict on that day, too. But okay, good thing I didn't. If at all possible, is there another day that we can do that on? If you delay any farther than that, I can't get the two week notice for the public notice. How about the 17th? 
It's the, it's on Wednesday. Does that I can do you can do the seventeenth. It anybody's just can't church? be no later than the eighteenth. You can do the fifteenth, sixteenth, or the seventeenth. See, I've got to have that two week. Say the fifteenth or the seventeenth. I'm good with either one of those. How about the seventeenth? Because that that's that I know it interferes with somebody's going to mess somebody's church up. But I've got the regional jail on the 16th and then a doctor's appointment that afternoon sometime. We can do the 17th. 17th? 6 o'clock. It's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. That's fine. That's Wednesday. 17th. Wednesday, the 17th at 6 p.m. We're going to be here. And it's a budget workshop only. It's a budget workshop, yeah. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to that effect. So moved. Have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, we are we're now adjourned to reconvene.